Hello everyone. Good afternoon from Pakistan and good morning and good evening to all who are in different time zones. Thank you for joining me for this webinar series brought to you by Kaizen Analytics LLP. So this is the ninth free webinar and the topic which we are covering today is basic ratio analysis in Power BI. So this is Mohamed Kashif. Uh, just a couple of things before uh, we get started with the actual content of the webinar. Uh, we have already emailed the database file to all participants who have registered with us. So for those who didn't register with us, uh, simply shoot us a request and we would love to share the Power BI files and all the material like the database the presentation uh, to all those who have requested. Um, we will leave the email address in the description of this webinar for your convenience. Uh, you must have many questions. So uh, leave them in the chat and my team will try to answer them on the spot or just simply email us and we would uh, love to respond to you shortly. So uh, simple introduction of myself. Uh, I'm a member of ICMA, almost worked in, uh, worked in uh, every field uh, relevant to finance, from bookkeeping to corporate finance, um, in financial feasibility, financial modeling, data analytics, data visualization, business process on analysis, uh, capacity building, trading analysis, trading assessment, development of curriculum, delivery of, of training, post-training activities, which include on-job and other, other things as well. I'm also founder of Kaizen Analytics LLP, which is a limited liability partnership firm registered in Pakistan in SECP. Our core area of business is consultancy projects, capacity building, and focus. we are focused on emerging technologies like business, business intelligence, blockchain, analytics, and much more. So our service portfolio is focused on two areas. First, we focus on capacity building. This is not the training. We help professionals implement learning of training program in their professional activities and reporting. That's the core. The second thing is we focused on data-driven decision-making projects, uh, especially with Power BI so that business can make informed decision using their data to stay ahead of the curve. So let's just focus on today's webinar. So it is divided into three sections, ratio analysis. What is ratio analysis? So I'll just give a brief overview of what is ratio analysis, not the academic one, just a brief. Uh, second is we'll, we'll focus on a database on and we'll uh, do the complete ratio analysis in Power BI. Uh, ratios will be limited, but the analysis will be complete. And then the section three is way forward. So ratio analysis. What is ratio analysis? So primarily, what is the uses of ratio analysis? It's, it is used in uh, a two main purpose, tracking company performance. Well, determining individual financial ratio per period and tracking the change in their value over time is done to spot trends that may be developing in a country, uh, in a company. Uh, for example, an increasing debt to asset ratio may indicate that the company is overburdened with, burden, with debt and may eventually be facing some default risk. So the second uh, use of, of ratio is making comparisons uh, and uh, making competitive judgment against company performance. So comparing your ratios with that of the major competitors in the same sector is done to identify whether a company is performing better or worse than the industry average. For example, uh, comparing the return on assets between the company help an analyst and uh, investor to determine which company is making most effective use of its assets. So this is uh, just one example. Then who are the users of, of ratio analysis? So they are primarily two, the external users and internal users. So external users, financial analysts, writers, 
competitors, industry observers, and n many more. Internal, yes, starting from the top, owner, board of directors, top management, employees. Uh, and now, if we just divide, there are uh, quite a number of ratios. So, if broadly we can divide uh, ratios analysis in five categories: there are liquidity ratios, leverage ratio, effective ratios, profitability ratio, and market value ratio. So, what is a liquidity ratio? So, liquidity ratio are financial ratios that measure a company's ability to repay both short and long-term obligations. Common liquidity ratio includes like the current ratio. So it measures the company ability to pay off short-term liability with current assets. Asset test is, is like a measure of company ability to pay off short-term liability with quick assets. Uh, which includes cash, cash and easy, easily convertible uh, assets. And the cash ratio is much more strict. So, just uh, we uh, we determine whether the company has the ability to pay off short-term liability with cash and cash equivalents. So, this is cash ratio. Operating cash flow ratio is a measure of a number of times a company can pay off current liabilities with the cash generated in a given period. So it is, these are just examples of, of liquidity ratios. Um, leverage ratios. So leverage ratio measure the amount of capital that come from debt. In other words, leverage ratio are used to evaluate company debt level. Common leverage ratio are, for instance, this debt ratio, which measures the relevant amount of company asset that are provided from debt. Uh, debt to equity ratio calculate the weight of total debt and financial liability against the stakeholder or shareholder equity. Um, interest coverage ratio shows how easily a company can pay its in, uh, interest expense. Um, debt service ratio reveal how easy a company can pay its debt obligation. Efficiency ratio, well, uh, some common example of efficiency ratio. Well, efficiency ratios are known as uh, activity ratio. Uh, and they're used to measure how well a company is utilizing its assets and resources. Um, common examples are asset turnover ratio, where you just want to have the ability of the feel of the company, how the company is generating how much sales are generated from a given amount of, of, of given amount of assets. Inventory turnover, well, it measures how many times a company inventory is sold and replaced over a given period of time. Um, um, receivable turnover ratio, well, account receivable turnover, turnover ratio measures how many times a company can turn receivable into cash over a given period of time. Day sales in inventory, well, um, measures the average number of days that a company hold on to inventory before it sales to the, um, to the customer. Uh, profitability ratio, uh, they are commonly used. Profitability ratios, for instance, they are judging the ability uh, of the company to generate income relevant to revenues, for instance, balance sheet accounts and other things. Um, the common are gross margin ratios, for instance, it compares gross profit of the company to its net sales. Uh, operating uh, margin ratio compares the operating income of the company uh, to its uh, net sales. Uh, return on asset ratio, uh, how effectively a company is using its asset to generate profit. And uh, return on equity, well, measures how effectively a company is using its equity to generate profit. And, and market value ratio, the market value ratio are used to evaluate the, uh, primarily the share price uh, of the company stock. Common market value ratios are like this um, book value per uh, share. So book value per share ratio calculate the per share value of the company based on the equity available to the stakeholder. 
the dividend yield ratio means the amount of dividend attributed to shareholder relevant to the market value per share. The earning per share ratio measures the amount of net income earned for each share outstanding and uh, price earning ratio compares a company share price to its earning per share. So this is just a, I just given a, a, a bird eye view of, of ratio analysis, not going into depth. And uh, our focus is uh, just to work on a data and uh, conduct ratio analysis in Power BI. So we'll uh, move to that one. And uh, before moving to that one, I'll just, um, I have the habit of analyzing what this webinar is and how it is performing as far as the pillars of, of, of Power BI is concerned. So data transformation, uh, there will be not much, but few elements which will be there. Uh, data modeling will be a beginning level. Yeah, for tax function, visualization will, will go much more beyond uh, for a beginning level. And uh, I hope you have downloaded Power BI Desktop. This is a free software. If you haven't downloaded it yet, please download it. So let's review the data set and let's move to the Power BI itself. So um, this is a, a common um, uh, way of representing the balance sheet. And if you can see, there are asserts and, and all those lines are there, formatting are there. So the, this is a common way of representing uh, balance sheet where uh, there are certain blocks like current assets, non-current assets. Then there are current liabilities, non-current liabilities and stakeholder equity and these are the totals so this is a total of liability and stakeholder and this is the total of total assets this is an income statement a, a sample income statement uh, a very simple one and this is a top line and now it goes down up till the net income so we'll we will change this this one to a much more readable form in power bi so we'll start it with uh, certain changes. If you have any of these, uh, this type of reports, uh, I'll show you how you can change it. So let's start with this balance sheet. So I will, uh, I don't need this one. So I'll just delete them. And the second part is, uh, if you know, this is assert, correct assert, and then this is the third third uh, level of our account. So I'll just create two more elements over here, two more columns. In the first column, I'll name it as assets. And the second column, I will name it as current liabilities. So this is asset up till here, it is current liability, right? So I will delete it from here. So now I am preparing the third level. This current liabilities, I'll just make them, okay. We don't need totals. So the balance sheet is tallied, right? We don't need the total. We will do the uh, all the aggregation in, in Power BI. So let's delete it. And the asset will continue up till here. Now this is non-current assets, so I'll just create a, a non-current asset for second level. And this is important because we will be referring these columns and uh, this is an important concept. So I'll just delete this one and let's delete all of them as well because all the totals will be done in Power BI. Now this is liability, so liability and so I'll just copy this one up till here, up till here. And I'll just copy one element, which is, this is total liability. So I'll just name it liabilities and stakeholders. Okay. So it's good to go from here and here. So this is current liability. So I'll name it as current liability. 
this is non current liability so i'll name it as non current liability and this is shareholder equity so i'll make it shareholder equity other parts i'll just delete them because we will do uh, all the calculations over here so this is deleted and these three elements are deleted all the aggregations and all those things and we will delete this one and we'll delete this as well okay great now let's make it one format and let's make this one right and let's name it as level 1 this is so let's make it level 3 and let's make it level 2 so we have converted our uh, balance sheet in a format so i'm making it in a table format and naming it as balance sheet so now it is our balance sheet is in a format which is readable in any database so we'll be reading it in power bi so this is one conversion let's make it the other conversion let's delete this one and let's have because it is in a different format so i'll just uh, stick with two levels so i'll just make this one this is revenue so this is revenue this is service cost let's name it as service cost no short term for others uh, this is rating and i will uh, not go deep in other things uh, a bit a beta and other things uh, for others i'll just make this one as other expenses other expense or income let's make it other expense or income right right so i'll just make all of them other expense or income so now we don't need totals so i'll delete this one and i will delete this as well this is uh, operating income we don't need this one because we will calculate operating income a bit will calculate a bit a beta we will be calculating a beta and we will be calculating net income as well so our income statement is now in a form where it can be read in power bi so i'll change it in tables it is easy for it for power bi to recognize this one statement income statement right so now it is till here it is income statement and it is balance sheet so i will save this thing and save this file and then open a power bi so black uh, power bi is opened and let's add file over here so i am giving the file name it has recognized both of them so this is balance sheet and this is income statement right so i will transform and load both of them and uh, in the meanwhile i will uh, it is transforming and loading so let me just uh, this uh, date table will be uh, given to all the participants uh control a control c i'm creating a date table uh date start from 2010 up till 2019 so i will create a date table from this new source blank 
query advanced editor and i will delete this one paste the code the code will be shared to all the participants and it starts with um, our data starts with uh, 10 2010 so we'll start with our working with first january 2010 this one and we end in 31st december 2019 so our data starts with 2010 up till 2019 yes good and we can take it as one so uh, we will change the name to date okay and now we will do certain transformation because as far as power bi is concerned power bi or any other uh, bi tool is uh, is based on on databases so databases in a database primarily databases work on columns they don't work on rows so in this row over here there are two type of data there is date and there is the value so we will change them we click on this one unpivot other columns now i name it as date and i will name this one as ds value and change this type to date that's it nothing else and i will do the same over here first to unpivot other columns name it as date name it as is value and change the type to date so now it will recognize all the elements and we will do the calculations uh, by ourselves uh, i'll explain it over here so balance sheet income statement and date let's close and apply so now our data is loading in power bi and once it is loading so we will start our working for creating the uh, relationships we, and these are we we have been doing some basic work which is the foundation work first transformation the data modeling so these are the two important pillars on and on top of it we'll do the analysis mm -hmm. so these uh, these are very important part so this is this is a lookup table and these are our fact tables so we'll match this date to this date in balance sheet and we'll match this date to this date in income statement simple so our foundation is now complete which is our working and now we are good to go for our analysis so let's just first give it a name so I'll just give it a name of basic ratio analysis in Power BI. So let's let, let's don't name it as Power BI. Let's name it only basic ratio analysis. And let's make it 28. This is dark blue bold. Yeah. Let's see. That is good to go and. So now we have named it, let's save it, and uh, let's start with some uh, basic calculations. So let's start with uh, calculating uh, balance sheet items and then income statement items. So let's start it over here. So I'll create a new table, enter data. And basic calculations loaded and in this basic calculation let me just add one measure so i will now 
add one measure. So this is a supporting measure. It won't do the uh, required calculation, but it will help us in uh, determining the values. So BS values, and uh, let's do this sum of our BS values column. So in this way, it is just doing the sum of uh, BS value column. And it has all the uh, asset liabilities and, and current assets and all those things. And we will uh, go uh, one uh, one way ahead for this working. So let's say this is a BS value. And now we'll work on uh, specific values, for instance, this function which we have used, it is just adding the values in this BS value column, simple. And that number is just a generic number. It is not giving us a meaningful information, but we will convert it to a meaningful information by uh, specifying the column name. For instance, what I'm trying to do is, I'll refer this, column of level two to create current assets, right? So let's have the current assets. Current assets is equal to, so I'll place one factor of, I'll place the function of calculate and I give the expression of BS value, which we have already calculated. And now we want to filter it. So we want to filter it by balance sheet level two, where current assets is written. So it is case sensitive. If in the column, it is written as current assets with S, you should write it with S. So I think I have written it with S. If it is calculating the value, so then we are good to go. Yes. So now we are doing the calculation for S. So, and, and that's an amazing part because if I just place a slicer of year over year, so this is a slicer of year and I can make it in, not drop down, let's make it in tiles. So I'll just, click over here and I will start with certain visualization as well. So I, in journal, I'll make it a tile in tiles. So now I have the years above and uh, let's turn off this header. And yeah, this is good to go. And we can just make it much more appealing, this one by adding one more thing. So let's have the items and make it dark. This is white. Yes, so it is now good to go. And it is giving us the specific values. And also if we can have it in elements as well. That's good. So we have created a slicer as well and correct assets. So for correct assets, this is the value. Now let's have the other value of non current assets. So I'll just place this non current asset formula over here. So it is going in level two non current assets. And it is doing the calculation of non print assets, that's good. And uh, we'll just move for current assets, non print assets to current liabilities, and then non print liabilities. So in our working over here, we have current liabilities with S, yes. So let's move the formula is the same. So I'll just Just copy the formula, the methodology is same. Calculate BS value and filter it with level two column where current liabilities are written. 
simple so now current liabilities are also calculated and i'll go same for non current liabilities so non current liabilities are also with scs good so let's go for non current liabilities because we we eventually will be doing some ratios analysis but for ratios we'll have to first calculate the values and then we'll calculate the ratios so non current liabilities are also calculated and let's place them over here so now the the calculations are are as far as the calculation of 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 uh, balance sheet is concerned only one uh, item is is remaining which is a uh, shareholders equity so let's see what is the shareholders equity yes so one element is is missing so we'll do this calculation of shareholder equity with the same formula see so i create a shareholder equity with the same formula and let's add it over here let's see if it is doing the calculation so it is not doing the calculation and let's see what is shareholder equity and what is the shareholders equity okay this so this comma is in the way now i think yes so now it is doing the calculation and that's good so it it, it is case sensitive and if it is not the text is not exact with the text in the column so it will it won't do the calculation so you have seen that and uh, we have uh, that the basic calculation of of income statement uh, so on balance sheet so we'll do the basic calculation for income statement so for income statement we'll use the same methodology for instance uh, for balance sheet we have first calculated this bs values and then we have uh, referred this column of level 2 and we have done the calculation for current asset non current asset current liabilities non current liabilities and uh, uh, shareholder equity so we'll do the calculation in the same manner for income statement we will first do this calculation of is values over here and then we will go for either level 1 or level 2 to do the calculations so first let's have the calculation of is values income statement value so it's a simple sum formula so i'll just name it as is values and make it sum and is is value given the name of column and we are good to go so now this is a common formula and now we will uh, go beyond this formula to do other calculations so for revenues we'll do the same we will place it where revenues are present so let's have the formula revenue calculate is values and filter it with level 1 of the income statement column where revenue is written so let me just add this one over here so it is doing the calculation yes and uh, revenue and then it was so let's see what it was around so revenue then cost of service so the second is cost of service so i'll just name it as cost of service cost of service calculate is values and in level 1 not in the balance sheet in the income statement level 1 please return the values where you find cost of sales so there is 
there is something which is over here. So let me just see, there was one uh, space, whether it is calculating or not, yes, it is calculating. So uh, cost of service it is done. And let's see what is our next operating expenses. So we'll do the operating expenses. Operating expenses and let's have it. Calculate IS values. Uh, level one of income statement where you find operating expenses, right? Yes, good. And uh, we will do other income and expenses just to make it uh, very simple for net profit. So let's have it over here. So net profit. Uh, this is other expense and and income other expense and income so we will calculate is values and we will go for level one of our income statement where we find other expenses and income so let's add it over here and this is this is a cumulative value right so it may be changed it may change uh, for some time but it may be positive it may be negative so there is one positive value as well in 2014 so cumulative is is, is negative so now we have uh, done with some some calculations which is the figures and we'll do uh, the next calculations for uh, ratios so let's add a new table. You can do it in in same table, but um, I tend to prefer one type of calculation in one table. So ratio calculation. And let's start with uh, some basic ratios. So we will start with um, with this is ratio calculation so let me just add with so let's start with uh, profitability issues like gross profit gross profit so let's name it gross profit okay and we will okay first let's we will have to calculate gross profit so revenues minus cost of sales we will have to calculate revenues minus cost of we won't be jumping to the ratios uh, now so i'll just change this and i'll just go for gross profit ratio as well so gross profit ratio is divide gross profit with revenue so now this is gross profit ratio, but the first was the, the amount. So we are left with certain amounts. I'll just click over here. I'll just change this to the basic calculation because this is the, the value, it is not the ratio. So I'll delete this one. And we'll have to do the calculations for other as well. So first is the gross profit and then is the operating profit and then net profit so operating profit is gross profit minus operating expenses so we'll have the operating profit and lastly we will have the net profit delete it 
all together and let's have the net profit which is um, operating Okay, so it is the seed. Okay, it is operating profit. Operating profit minus other income and expenses to have our net profit. So we have the net profit. So let's do the calculation. We have our gross profit uh, percentage. So let's have the uh, net profit percentage as well. Uh, operate first, start with operating profit. Operating profit percentage, which is divide operating profit with revenue. Right. Operating profit with revenue. And uh, let's have the third one as well, which is the net profit. So let's have the net profit is equal to net profit, which is the net profit percentage is equal to we'll divide net profit with revenue. So we will have the percentage over here. And let's delete it and let's choose an area chart just take an example and let's have the percentages over here so we will start with say gross profit net profit and and now let's have the dates so let's say years so this is how our gross profit is working So let's pro let's place it in gross profit. Yeah. So our we can see that our gross profit. So it is in decimal. So let's change it to percentage. So I'll click on this measure, make it one decimal. Second, click over here, make it one decimal, click over here and make it one decimal. Okay. okay, so this is the share of our cross profit. Cross profit is reducing by time, and this is the Operating profit, so it is. It has reduced. It then it has increased. Then it has reduced. And the net profit, which is the above one, it is. It has reduced over here, and then it has increased. And this is. So this is just, uh, and you can show it in, in quite a number of ways. So I'll just uh, make certain other adjustments. So let's have a. Let's name it. First, let's say, turn on the data labels. So data labels, it tends to get too busy. So I can customize as well. I can use any one. So I need only one item, which is uh, net profit. So I just need net profit in dark blue. And for gross profit, I don't need to show and for operating profit I don't need to show okay so I just show this one which is the bottom line and uh, to have the value so all the values will be visible on on uh, mouse over so as a tooltip but you can show one value as well 
and uh, there is no hard and fast rule you can uh, do the changes as you like so i'm just deleting the titles over here and let's make it so as far as our color theme is concerned dark blue and let's delete the title and also let's make it as far as color is concerned let's make it dark blue so yes and for our title total no titles this one yes so let's make it trend of profile just trend of profitability ratio and let's make it dark blue and white and also yes and make it 30 yes so it is just a trend of, of profitability ratios how profitability ratios are working and you can also give a cumulative effect of profitability ratio for instance i'll just uh, give value over here this one so it, it, it will give a comprehensive value of profitability ratio and i'll just uh, turn on the title turn off the category and let's make it because it is a gross profit margin and let's make it white let's make it dark blue center line and let's make this one 12 yeah and as far as the data label is concerned I think 30 is yeah, it is good and let's make it blue so i think it is good to go with this one so i'll just place it over here and control c and v control c and v i'll just place it over here control c and v and i can place it over here so here uh, let's make it operating and let's name it as opex okay so operating profit ratio and let's make this one Net profit ratio. So this is let's make it title net profit ratio, and and this is a cumulative one, and it is showing us the uh, trend of profitability ratio. So you can go with one, and for one selection, this definitely this chart doesn't give you any figure. It's just a point because it is an year, so you can click on two or three years by pressing control button, then you will have a trend, right? or just click on one and then click on this one yeah good so now we have the basic ratio analysis profitability ratios and uh, we can uh, move to some other ratios for instance uh, there is a cash and quick ratio so let's have the first the uh, first do the current ratio Current ratio is divide current assets over uh, current liabilities. So I'll just, we have done the calculation for current assets and current liabilities. Yes, we have done this calculation. So current assets over current liabilities. So this is, and we can also show it in, in many ways. So we can show it in trend lines. So this is current ratio and let's place it against here. So let's place it with, so this is current ratio. And it is in times, definitely. 
so it is it's, it is dropping by 2.6 to over 1.4 over time so let's see what is the trend of um, cash ratio so for cash ratio we have done current assets but we haven't calculated cash so we will have to calculate the cash so cash is at level 3 okay so we will do the calculation for cash and then we can have the cash ratio so let's do the calculation for cash cash is calculate bs value because this is a balance sheet value and it is go at level 3 and find out all the values where you find cash so this will be cash and let's see whether it is doing the calculation for cash yes it is doing the calculation for cash so this is cash and um, now it's easy to do the calculation for cash ratio so let's have the calculation for cash ratio cash ratio is equal to divide cash over current liabilities so let's divide cash over current liabilities and let's place it over here so now it is from so the cash ratio it has another trend it, it tends to go above for instance it will now it is giving us a good analogy so the current ratio is dropping year by year but the cash ratio has increased in first year then second year and then it has dropped and then it has increased a lot so this gives you the the information of, of any any organization as a whole so let's just change it so let's just format it in a quick manner and we can have it in another way just so let's just delete the y-axis as a whole because it is giving us an information so let's delete this y-axis as a whole because it is giving us a value that's good and we have name it will name this one so i'll just delete it over here and make it a name so i'll just make it a one name that is current ratio versus cash ratio by year no current ratio versus cash ratio simple and yeah it's good to go so let's add the current ratio and cash ratio over here so this is current ratio so let's add the current ratio first and let's name it as current ratio right and now let's add the cash ratio and let's name it as cash ratio so we have trends and we have cash ratios and uh, let's uh, we have touched the income side the balance sheet side so let's touch uh, other uh, other balance sheet sites as well so let's have the the equity and debt equity ratio so let's go for debt equity and uh, debt, debt to equity ratio let's see for debt to equity ratio and compare it with uh, shareholder equity so let's and one more thing which i am just following so these these are the years which which are which we are 
following and these years are not in a manner which we like to do so let's do one more thing which is go over here and align it so i will align it with financial age so it is not doing anything so let me just see it so now it is aligned 20 10 11 12 13 14 15 yes good so this alignment is good this alignment is needed so i'll just align this one in this column align with financial year and let's delete it and let's add it over here so now it's it is aligned yes so what i will do i'll just uh, control c and we'll just make one more over here and i will this is aligned and we will use this uh, line and cluster column chart right? but not this one it's just this was good yeah this one so cluster column chart the ears will be there line and cluster column chart i'll delete ears from here because it will have the ears in between this one and I will also delete years from here. So now, if you just want to see which are the years, so you can just see it from here. So these are the years. These are the years. So it is all aligned. So now let me just because I'm doing certain other calculations. So. I, I will do the calculation for uh, debt to equity ratio. So debt to equity ratio is total debt, which is current liabilities or non-current liabilities uh, versus sh shareholder equity. So let's do the calculation for, it is total liabilities uh, over shareholder equity. So debt to equity ratio is equal to will divide by we are placing certain other elements and then shareholder equity over here. So in this bracket, I will place two elements, which is two calculations, current liabilities and non-current liabilities. So now this is over here and we have the uh, amount of sh uh, sh uh, shareholder equity. So I will delete them and I will add shareholder amounts in column. And this one is debt to equity. I will place it in line chart. So we have the value in the line chart. And let's just delete this one. Not this one, I think. Yes, from here we have other elements as well. Secondary. Show it first and then. We don't need secondary one. So let's. Yes, over here. So now we have the elements and let's see. Yes. Okay. Control set. Yes. So we have all the ears are aligned and all the elements are also aligned. So we have this one. So let me make it much more so it will be yes so we have all the years and we have trend of profitability ratio current ratio versus cash ratio and nah, this one is we need to change the name so it is
holder equity versus that to equity simple so this is showing the trends over the area so we can see that so um now it's time to have some other calculations so let's control c and v and let's place the that to equity ratio over here and let's name it as that to equity so let's make it much more shorter one and we can have um, other ratios for instance uh, debt ratio which is the total liabilities uh, over total assets so let's have the debt ratio as well we will calculate debt ratio over here so it's debt ratio and it is divide we will place two elements and now let's add current liabilities plus non current liabilities this one current liabilities and non current liabilities and we will divide it with current assets plus non current assets current liabilities so uh, sum of current uh, total liabilities that is uh, divided by total assets okay great so let's have this one and let's place it over here so delete this thing and current liabilities and let's name it as debt ratio so let's that two equity so that is debt ratio and we can do other calculations so um let's have other one like uh, efficiency ratios so let's have the efficiency ratio and first the we'll do with the uh, like um asset turnover ratio so let's have the asset turnover ratio so asset turnover ratio our ratio is it is uh, sales over total assets average total assets so let's have uh, consider it as total assets so we'll divide revenue over now we will have both current assets plus non current assets so how our assets are performing as far as our revenue is concerned so let's have this one control c and v and let's place it over here for asset turnover yes and let's name it as asset turnover great so we can have um inventory turnover as well and i think let me just see we have the value of inventory in balance sheet if we have the value of inventory let's see this is an inventory is at level 3 so let's calculate first the value of inventory and then we'll go for inventory turnover ratio it's cox over inventory so let's it is at level 3 inventory is calculate bs values and filter it with level 3 of is equal to inventory so this is in level 3 so let me just see inventory is without s in okay inventories 
so it won't do the calculation uh, where are yeah here yeah. so it will not do the calculation right now but it will i'll just correct it right now it invent to inventories get okay. now it is doing the calculation okay so this is inventory and let's have this inventory as inventory turnover so this will be the last part of our working of inventory so let's have the inventory turnover inventory uh, cox over cost of goods sold so it is a cost of service so inventory turnover ratio is equal to divide cost of service over inventory and let's just have this one over here so inventory turnover ratio is, is quite high and let's have this one as inventory okay let's make it as inventory turnover ratio so let's make the cap uh, align with each other so it will not look so they are not exactly aligned but they are good to go yes now as far as this part is concerned we can just fill up, up fill this part with other elements so i will just add other elements over here yes so we have this one and uh, we can show certain uh, elements of, of, of income statement over here as well so i will just add um, a 100 percent stack bar chart just to show the uh, income statement so for here uh, i can add like uh, I, I will start with current assets, current assets, non-current assets, and then current liabilities and non-current liabilities. So we can have the trends over over time, over period of time. So I'll, I'll add the trend over here. So it is giving us the trend when current assets have bigger share as far as balance sheet is concerned. It is not giving us the amount. It is just giving us the percentage that's an important part because it is a percentage so non-current assets have reduced just then increased and reduced current liabilities well they tend to decrease and then increase non-current liabilities they decrease then increase and decrease so it is a, it, as a whole as a percentage so i'll add this is a line in a manner which is good so i'll just uh, share this uh, one with uh, like we can have the value so i will just make it uh, decimal let's make it one one decimal is good to go um, as far as legends are concerned let's let's have the legend but because it's important to have the legends and this one is good and as far as the y-axis is concerned i do not need title but other things are and let's make this one dark blue as far as our working is concerned and let's make this one y-axis so i will turn off the title and i will make it dark blue okay good and as far as title is concerned so let's have a title of say
balance sheet item trend of print balance sheet item let's say trend of balance sheet item and let's do it same for uh, the heading and this is 13 i think yes we have used 13 for our working so uh, we can have um, the combination of of current assets or or revenue over here so let's let's use a chart which is let's have yeah this one so let's show certain so we have the GP, so let's show it in revenue and let's see. We can show it in many, many ways. So this is our revenue. So how our revenue is growing. So it is, it is growing. So we can show it the trend of revenues by year. And let's just uh, make it a title. So revenue trend trend of revenue and let's make it a white background this one center line in 13 and one more thing which is important is in y axis i don't need the titles so it is revenue right so i don't need titles So that's it. And let's change the background just to make it much more appealing. So let's make it lighter, darker, and let's turn off the background. And I will select all of them because they are one type of um, chart, turn off the background. Turn off this background, turn off this background, turn off this background, turn off this background as well, turn off this background, and turn off this background. Yes. So I turn off the background. So these are the cards, and this is highly interactive. You can have the certain years in place and you can see certain years and you can also see just one year great so um, and I hope you have enjoyed this session of uh, basic ratio analysis so from a from uh, the the sheet which we have so let me just open the sheet which we have uh, from at the beginning of the session and we have converted this sheet into these two sheets so this this was the balance sheet which we have and this was the income statement which we have so in just uh, this hour or so we have converted uh, this sheet into this dashboard which is giving us some information like revenue is increasing so let's give this one uh, values as well turn on the data labels yes so now we have the values so it is giving us that revenue is increasing by time and as far as the profitability ratios are concerned so net profit which is the bottom line has reduced from 27 percent to 16 percent so if the revenue has increased and the net profit has decreased so definitely it is something uh, either opex has increased or cox has increased so the bot bottom line should also be increased in this one uh, the mm, the gross profit 
has increased from 28% to 34%. So the cost of service is, is controllable, but as far as operating revenue is operating profit is concerned, it is 18% to 13%. So it has reduced. The operating profit has reduced 13%. And uh, so the operating expenses have something to do with this thing. So it, it is just a uh, analogy of, of, of uh, working. And as far as cash ratio is concerned, so yes, uh, current ratio was 2.4 and cash was 1.2. But over the period of time, the current ratio has decreased by 1.2. But the cash ratio has some opposite trends. As far as uh, this uh, shareholder equity is concerned, so you can see the trends which is different. Balance sheet, yes. Current assets have increased. Current liabilities, non-current liabilities have decreased. Revenues have increased. So. It is just one analogy of, of analysis, and you can do multiple analysis. You will have these files, uh, and you can do different analysis by yourself. So this was part two of our working, and let's start with the way forward. So what is the way forward which uh, which we uh, present? So there are uh, certain uh, premium training workshops. So this was uh, a quick this overview of what we do in in this workshop so that workshop is is detailed so you can interact with uh, the trainer and you can ask questions and they will answer you and you can clear your concepts so there are certain workshops um, which we are running and you can just uh, write us an email or whatsapp us so we will uh, respond to you when uh, these workshops are happening so uh, you can just connect to us, connect to our trainer, connect to our uh, Power BI um, special group on LinkedIn. You can also follow us uh, on, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and you can email us. So thank you for now. And uh, let's meet in the next webinar. Uh, good day.